Chapter 40, Where Amy Had Gone Mad Axel quickly explained to the adventurers that Amy may be tracking down the remaining members of the forces of evil, presumably still fighting Guildmaster Hilarius and the others above. They had to rush back and out of this dungeon. Richard, knocked out, was brought back with a reviver seed team Blue had with them and was also explained what had happened. He took the news very calmly. Doing the same to Bao or Fur had seemed too dangerous and Bao was too heavy for Aaron or anyone else to take him with them up, so, heavy-hearted and in a hurry, they decided to leave him here for now. They left the room and began hurrying back the way they came. Right outside the door that was guarded by the Goluk before, Mo noticed something strange and stopped. At the wall to his left stood a figure, pressing itself against the wall. In the darkness Mo could see two yellow eyes, looking directly at him in a nervous state, and a big frown with shiny, white teeth. Mo, we need to hurry? Aaron told him. There is someone. Mo answered. In response. The eyes of the figure flinched into slits, while still focused at Mo. Aaron accompanied Mo and saw the figure as well. Mo walked closer to this strange Pokémon and he let his dark aura appear to intimidate it. Who are you and what do you do here? He asked. The figure laughed quietly and in a nervous way and presenting itself. The Pokémon seemed to be a Meowth, or something similar to one, for Mo had never seen a Meowth like this before. It wore golden rings, one around its foot and one on its ear. In comparison to a normal Meowth it had grey, messy fur, long and shaggy, making it look like it had a beard, with an amulet on its head, black as coal. Hello to you too, my name is Valdis, I'm a tourist, it said. Due to the sound of its voice, name and its appearance Mo could not figure out if the Pokémon in front of him was male or female. A tourist? Mo asked, knowing this was odd. Yes, I was sightseeing the ruins of the town, then discovered this cave here and thought, I'll check it out, and now I'm here. It answered while smiling meanly like a jenger. Aaron tiled his head, seeing this Pokémon. I could swear I have seen you before, he said. The Meowth seemed more nervous than before. Do you work for the forces of evil? Mo asked, still with his aura up but not with glowing eyes. The Meowth took some time. New, of course not. It answered. Mo, Aaron, will you hurry? Ziggy shouted at them for afar. Doesn't matter. Mo quickly told the feline Pokémon and he and Aaron hurried to the others. The Meowth following them. I hope the others are all right, Axel said. Your boss and this boulder thing were still fighting while I sneaked down. It doesn't look good for them, but they keep it on, the Meowth said out loud. How what are you doing here? Ziggy asked as he heard the Meowth and turned his head in surprise. And why do you follow us? Mo asked it rudely and shortly after realized Ziggy, somehow, knew that one. Wait, you know that guy? I'm a female Meowth. Why do others always think I'm a guy? The Meowth answered. And I would really. Really like to know what happened between you and Furhat. I only saw him getting his rock butt kicked by you. About time someone whooped him. So you are one of them, Mo told her. I do uh, Ziggy called out. She's also the one that hurt my eye. Axel suddenly stopped and turned around with the Meowth almost running into him. It doesn't matter right now if you are a member of the forces or not, he said looking directly into the Meowth's face, pointing at her. What matters is that we find Amy before she does something terrible. I don't care what your motive is, but if you don't stay quiet I personally make you so. Got that? The expression from the Meowth's face turned from surprised to angry to annoyed. Fine, she answered. After looking at her for a little longer Axel turned back around and kept running like before. So. Mo went to Ziggy to ask him quietly. You know that one? Mo pointed with his fake head to the Meowth. Ziggy seemed to not have heard Mo's question and remained silent. Mo did not bother to ask again. After a long while, 
Following Axel down all the halls and rooms they passed and the unknown still lying around they arrived at the stairs. It was awfully quiet unlike before when they first arrived down here, no fighting noises from above and the walls left and right of the stairs had marks on them. As if something large, too large for this stairway tried to get up and scratched the falls with his body. Reaching the end of the stairs, Luminous Cave laid in ruins. There were signs on both the walls and the ground that a hard fight took place and the crystal that granted evolution and opened the entrance to the stairs was completely shattered but still remained shimmering and glowing. Paul and Phil, knocked out, laid on the ground to their left. The Graveler twins guarding the stairs, one left, one right, were surprised as the group reached the top and stepped aside. Axel. A familiar. Robotic voice called to the adventurers. By the wall to their right, Heidi was threatening Amy's mother who was sitting and clearly in a lot of pain. Steve and Alphonse were with them as well, with Steve looking better but Alphonse was wrapped in bandages, laying on the floor, not moving a muscle. Steve immediately rolled to his teammate, Axel hugging the orb like Pokemon. Where are the others? Mo asked Heidi. She turned to him. They took the fight outside, trying to keep the forces away from the cave. They're probably still outside, but it's been awfully quiet for a while now and I'm too scared to look why. The chance he told him. Did you find the stone? Steve asked. Axel let him go. He did not know what to say at first. And where is Amy? Amy, Amy's mother tried to stand up, but was too tired and weakened to do so. There. Axel began she could be in great danger if we don't hurry now. Axel walked over to Amy's mother and took her paw. I promise you she'll be all right, he said. Amy's mother smiled at him. Axel turned around and looked at the other adventurers. I'm coming with you this time, Steve assured him. Axel nodded. Together they left the cave. It was still cloudy and the ground was wet, but the rain had stopped by now. And in the distance, at the Pokémon Square, they could see a tall, blue Pokémon, holding a glowing object. Axel flinched when he saw it. Amy, no! He called out and ran as fast as he could to the square, leaving the rest at the entrance for a moment. What? Steve asked and turned to the rest. Amy's abusing the origin stone, Ziggy told him. Don't tell your mother, Richard added. Her. Nia corrected him. Team Blue followed Axel, leaving a confused Steve behind with Team Purple and the strange me oath. You're a strange group, the M-E-W-O-T-H told the four. In a hurry Steve followed them, with Team Purple and the me oath following, too. The square had sings of damage due to a battle, but not more ruined than it already was. In the middle of the square stood Amy still in her new form and holding the glowing origin stone. By the former Persian bank where the remaining forces of evil, multiple coughing and trip pinch and another meoth with them as well, wearing some kind of belt and having silvery fur. At the front were the Houndoom and the Noivern from the cave, as well as Amanda Buzmo immediately recognized. They all were on the ground, not fainted but kneeing down to Amy, while having an expression like they were in pain. On the other side, near the Kecklian shop were Guildmaster Hilarious and Ginnon Golf from Team Green. The three Ponyard from Team Orange were directly by the former shop, two of them knocked out and the third on by their side and afraid of what was happening. Just like the forces, Hilarious and Ginn Golf were forced down. What would happen? Axel called out as he arrived. I did it, Axel. Amy happily announced as the turn to the arriving adventurers. I brought the forces of evil to their knees. Literally. And all by myself. Is is that you Amy? Steve asked in surprise, still not quiet knowing what was going on. And the guild master and gang golf? Axel shouted and pointed angrily at the two. They tried to take the origin stone away from me. So I had to make them kneel down to me as well. Amy answered, quickly changing from happy to serious and disappointed. Amy, listen to me. 
Hilarious tried to stand up and sounded exhausted. Amy quickly turned to him, anger in her eyes. Hilarious was forcefully pushed to the ground by an unseen force. No. You listen to me. Amy snapped. Pokemon like you should not have the origin stone. They just abuse it. She turned back to Axel and the others. But I have a vision, beyond this conflict, I'll make this world a better place, getting rid of all the evil there, so everyone can live in peace and harmony. Axel looked at her in silence, no other dared to speak. Does this look like harmony to you? Axel loudly asked her. Amy looked sadly to the ground. You don't understand, she said. Sooner or later they will have to be peaceful by themselves. The Meowth that followed them outside and was standing behind Mo suddenly pushed him to the side and stormed at the Lucario. Her eyes shimmering and her claws extended like small daggers coming out of her paws. Mine. The Meowth yelled and jumped at Amy, seemingly trying to get her paws on the origin stone while Amy was distracted. With a speed similar like bow before Amy reacted and grabbed Meowth in midair, holding her by her not visible neck. The Meowth struggled to get away and tried scratching Amy's arm, hissing at her violently. See what I meant before? Amy shouted, looking at Axel for a moment. She then proceeded to lift the Meowth up and slam her into the ground head first, creating a hole where the Meowth was now stuck in with only her behind, feet and tail looking out limp. Valdis, the other, silver-furred Meowth called out and tried to stand up like Hilarious tried before. Like Hilarious, he was forced down as well. You can't just force Pokémon to live like you want them to. Ziggy stepped forward and argued with her. In response Amy just looked at him, blankly. Her eyes slowly turning blood red until nothing but red was there. The origin stone began to glow brighter. Ziggy waiting for her to respond, began choking. He started gasping for air as he held his throat, Axel, Steve, Team Purple and his own team watching in shock. Ziggy, what's wrong? Naya tried to help him, but he couldn't answer. She turned to Amy. What are you doing? Stop! Naya shouted at her. Shortly after, she also began gasping for air. Richard did not dare to do or say anything but seeing his teammates suffocate in front of him, so had the other. Amy, cut. Axel tried to talk to her but ran right into an invisibly wall she put up again between them. Amy. Please. Stop. If you're not with me, he you're against me. She told them emotionless. Even Axel? Mo asked her. Then, the red in her eyes vanished. Amy was visibly surprised by her own actions, the glowing of the stone was not so strong anymore and Ziggy and Naya could breath again. Richard checked on them as they coughed. And what about your mother? Mo further asked and looked down the road to the cave. She's right down there, badly hurt. You say you want to change the world for the better. Right now you're only repressed Pokémon that doesn't think like you. In short term. This only makes things worse, Mo further told her. He was surprised himself that what he was doing was seemingly working. I used to look up to you after you saved me. I respected you, and that means something considering I don't like kids, he told her as well. He did not told her, but that day she lost Mo's respect. Amy began to think. She looked saddened at the origin stone she held in her paws. Axel with his hand on the invisible wall, hoping for her to change her mind. The silence was broken by a loud, deranged laughter from behind the remaining adventurers. Looking behind them, Furhat was on his way to them and grinning all over. What are you laughing at? Amy shouted at him and presented the origin stone. You and your dark forces have lost. Ziggy prepared to fight again while Charlotte did the same rolling to Mo in a protective stance. We saw this kind scenario coming. Furhat began to explain. You have bitten me and all members of the forces of darkness. Well done. But no matter what, you're not going to defeat our Dark Lord. Amy smiled in response, or rising around her. Let him come. 
I'm not afraid and I'll be never afraid of anything ever again. Oh, he's coming. Fur had snickered. After he said that a cut appeared above the defeated forces members, a glowing, light blue, long cut in midair, giving out a strange sound. And there he is. Fur had happily added. Mo remembered having seen this before, next to Ziggy's chamber in the hideout yesterday, still not knowing what it was. The cut began to widen, turning into a hole, a portal and tearing reality around it. The adventurers were surprised as well. They too never saw something like this before. What is that? Nai yelled in fear. I don't know. Mo answered and was afraid as well on what was going to happen. Amy. Axel hammered against the wall. Do something. Amy was looking at the hole again, and she smiled sinisterly. Let him come, she said. The hole widened more. Something tried to come out of it, something big. Black lightning started flashing around the hole as one, two huge black claws, similar like Moe's, reached out and began stretching it even wider. A creature with a body like a crystal in the blackest black Mo had ever seen pushed himself out of the hole. Now out of this hole in the air, this strange being looked around to see where it exactly was, then looking down to Amy, holding the origin stone tight and preparing to fight it. This strange Pokémon with a body like a diamond and as black as could be had two enormous claws, its head seemed to be very small and colorful as well like it had many eyes in different color. His feet were too small for its huge body, it was floating above the ground, so they weren't needed to walk anyway and spikes and sharp edges covered its body. Neither Mo or any one of the adventurers had ever seen or hear this kind of Pokémon before. Furhat floated by past the adventurers and greeted it. Welcome back to our world, Master Necrozma.